Friends, on the initial setup of the market garden out here, I originally started off with using block for raised beds throughout the market garden. And let me tell you, not only was it laborious putting it together, but after a while of trying to work in it, I found that it wasn't really efficient at all. Once you go to a certain size with your garden space, raised beds are really not practical. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gathering up some of these blocks that we've had around the perimeter of the garden for the past, I don't know, maybe two years since uh, it's been since we converted over to doing just raised beds with the earth as opposed to having them with block or wood. So uh, I'm gonna take this block and we're actually gonna set up some raised beds in the greenhouse for growing our tomatoes because we have some tomatoes that are, are ready to be transplanted about now. And and uh, the way the weather and temperatures or are, are, are trajectory is going forward, looks like uh, they should be totally fine in the greenhouse. So, but I do have, some challenges today we've had a lot of rain here recently so carrying around the block in the gorilla cart with the lawn tractor here hopefully i can get it up the slope here because a lot of the block are down there at the bottom so we'll just have to see what happens So our greenhouse is a work in progress, but we are growing a number of things in here right now, which includes squash that needs to be transplanted and cucumbers. And we have some lettuce started and a number of other things. But also in our grow room, we have tomatoes that we're planning to transplant right in here. And uh, this will be where we're gonna be making our raised beds right alongside the perimeter here in the greenhouse on both this side as well as the side over there. Last year we grew the tomatoes in the caterpillar tunnel and uh, I liked it, but I didn't like it. The height wasn't as high as our greenhouse here. So uh, I think having this extra height will really help with the hard pruning method. So we'll be able to harvest them a lot easier. But as I'm talking about putting them over here, Josiah is enjoying some wood sorrel over here, which is totally edible, isn't it Josiah? Mm -hmm. And it's there, I think it tastes kind of like the sweet tart candy. It's like sweet, tarty. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. You can eat the seed pods and the leaves and the flowers. And uh, most of the time you'll find it growing almost everywhere. Even in your backyard or front yard. And you can totally eat it as long as you're not spraying any chemicals on your lawn. Uh, it's pretty good. And uh, pretty good for you too. Hey guys. Hi. How are you doing, Micah? Doing well, Sailor? Yep. All right, we got some tomatoes that need to be transplanted, don't they? Yep. Right here, we got some tomatoes growing, some watermelons that we've started. Watermelons! You like watermelons? Pretty excited about that? Mm -hmm. We got some more tomatoes. We got some peppers over here. So we got things that are coming along. Some of the germination's a little bit lower than I would like for it to be, but uh, overall, some of them are doing well, especially the basil here. It is really cranking out. So, uh, look forward to getting those that ready and harvesting it. Let's say, let's go ahead and uh, carry these tomatoes out there to the greenhouse. Let's see. So 
the bed will go like this. It's about 30 inches wide, which is our normal standard bed width here on the farm. And uh, we'll be growing stuff in here as well as we could grow stuff here as well if we wanted to. So I'm uh, not sure if I'll do that yet, but uh, we'll see. Or we can put some cat block over it just to make it look nice and tidy. So we're gonna go down. So this bed will probably be about 40, 40 feet long by 30 inches wide. Uh, the greenhouse is 50 feet long itself. So uh, let's go get some more of these. So uh, let's say they'll drive the lawn tractor and uh, hopefully we don't get stuck. So you made it up here, good job. You were a little bit scared about it, wasn't you? A little afraid. Why? Because I really don't like going down the hill. Why? Mm, I don't know, it just creeps me out. Why? <laughs> because we're, probably because we're afraid that we're gonna fall into the pond. <laughs> you're afraid you're gonna fall into the pond? No, you're, you're being careful, you should be fine as long as you don't try anything reckless and crazy. <laughs> I'm more afraid about the boys trying something reckless and crazy than you. You guys will do something like that, won't you? No! Better not. Uh -huh. I don't know what. <laughs> You're not going to wreck. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we didn't get stuck in the mud. So we're going to load up right here and then carry our block right on back. And just keep this train going. So this load might be pushing into a little bit, but uh, speaking of push, if I think you're getting a little stuck, I'll just have to give you a little push back here if you get stuck. But uh, just do your best, pull up the throttle, get up the hill, make the right, head straight to the greenhouse. All right, and listen to me. <laughs> Don't leave me behind. I'm really, ah! <laughs> Drag me along. <laughs> All right, start it up, let's get going. Tire started spinning a little bit. So I was like, keep going, keep going. And we got it. Alrighty, now that we have our block laid down, I'm not gonna worry so much about making them completely level all around. We'll do that at another time. Right now the main focus is to be growing things in here. So it's, it's level for the most part. It's not, nothing's gonna fall over. And uh, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my knife and just cut the landscape fabric up. So that way we have access to the soil. And then we're gonna add some soil compost here to this. So that way the roots have enough room to grow uh, hopefully the soil will be somewhere right in there and then we'll come all the way down and roots can access this soil down here as well. So uh, they won't have to worry about fighting the weed barrier. Got a little bit of my favorite type of weed, not really. Bermuda grass, devil grass. Painting my grass. <laughs> Definitely one of my nemesis here on the homestead. Part of me is considering about putting one of these more narrow block along the base there, which would also help with heat. Doing that would reduce the size of this bed to about 24 inches, so it wouldn't totally be a problem, but uh, something I'm considering right now. I would have to cut it at certain points to go around the uh, the poles, the hoops, but uh, that's not a problem either. Something to think about. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think? 
that I put block around the perimeter. Thinking about it. Right now we're starting to see more snakes coming out, so I'm hoping I don't pull want this crabber go and see a snake under there anywhere. <laughs> Whoa, there's a toad there. <laughs> that one startled me a little bit. Come on out of there. <laughs> Hit a little home there in the mulch. All right, so after I've cut the landscape fabric, it does have some frayed edges. So what I like to do is I like to take the torch here and uh, just torch alongside those edges so it burns them and makes a nice, clean, clean edge so you won't get those, the strings and all caught up on anything. So uh, we'll just go spray it up. Right alongside the edge there. Okay, we're gonna be a little more careful going alongside the edge here so we don't burn our plastic. See those edges right here that they're all frayed and strings out? This engine just kind of brings it all together. Makes that edge a lot smoother. Not perfect, but smoother. All right, so we've made a lot of progress and I decided to go ahead and make an executive decision and put these block on the back here. Uh, it just seems to hold the, the soil intact a little bit better. Uh, I just like it. So uh, later on we'll use a quickie saw and, and cut out the indentions that I need to for the hoops. But uh, we're almost there. And uh, we just got a little bit of, of uh, compost and topsoil left in the truck that just has been crushing and doing a good job. Josiah, you're doing a great job. We're almost done. Finish this and then we'll take a lunch break. I like to finish a task if you can before you take a break. It just helps with momentum so you don't have to come back to it. He's doing a great job. Still working those muscles, man. Hey, Sayla. Yep. While Josiah and I are finishing, can you connect with mommy and go ahead and get lunch started for us? And then we'll, we should be inside right shortly after you finish. Yes, sir. Thanks. No problem. All finished? Yes. Yeah. All right, come on now, let's get lunch. Fantastic job, man. Thanks. Yeah, let me help you out. Yep. <laughs> All right, way to go. Thanks. You were working pretty hard, and I really appreciate that part of being a man learn to work hard all right <laughs> I still remember when I was a little boy a little bit younger than you I used to enjoy actually your age too I used to enjoy working with grandpa my dad out and we didn't have a garden but we used to mow the grass rake the leaves rake the grass pretty fun right. hello everybody hello is it lunchtime it's lunchtime come what, on in uh, what are we having Leftovers from last night, like we always have. One of the things that we do for lunch, just to save from work, is Lacey will make extra food from the night before the dinner, and then we that will typically be the lunch that we have the next day. And if there's none left over, then we'll do stuff like peanut butter sandwiches or something like that. And the food that we have left over, guys, what is it from? Taco, Taco Tuesday! Tuesday. Yep, we do Taco Tuesday here. Well, after we have lunch, guys, 
We're going to finish up the beds out there. Lacey, if you come out there and help us and see the progress that we made on the project. Okay. And help me with transplanting some tomatoes. And Selah, I'm going to trust you to do something. I want you to take the lawn tractor and see if you can find some cat block for me. Think you can do it? You up for it? You can do it? Yep. Well, pretty much unsupervised, so you go around property and see if you can find some. Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna eat. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, so Daddy wants me to drive the lawn tractor around the farm and get some cat block that matches the cat block he has already laid down. He only has a little bit. So I'm going to get him some more and find him some more and see where some is and he's going to trust me on doing it all by myself and and I really like how he can trust me like that. It makes me feel good. All right, so while Sailor's driving around looking for some more cat block for us, we're gonna go ahead and start putting these tomatoes in. How do you wanna do it? Do you wanna do just two rows side by side or do you wanna stagger the rows a little bit so they give them a little bit more extra room? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the, the hard pruning method and, and we're gonna have two rows here. We're gonna do a row of tomatoes, spacing them about a foot apart. And then in front of that, we may grow something like basil or, or something like that. So uh, we're just gonna go for right now, not staggering them. Just one row of tomatoes right down through there. Oh, Sailor's back. So did you find some? Yeah, a little bit. All right, let's go get them. Man, I have done this before. Yep. I don't ever get to ride. It's pretty neat. Now this is the kind of day that I truly cherish and really appreciate having. Days in which we're able to share life together as a family. Days in which the kids are working right by my side, getting dirty and sweaty together, being able to share lessons and experiences with my children, as well as accomplishing a task from start to finish together. It feels so good. And with having a home-based business, that is one of the, my favorite blessings of having, as well as homeschooling the kids. Even though they're kind of on a spring break right now since we're doing a lot around the farm, but we do homeschool our kids. And for those of you, if you have any questions about how we homeschool, please let us know in the comment section below. And for those of you who are parents, whether you're homeschooling your children or not, I encourage you, to make the most of the time that you have with your children because it's short. I heard, I was reading something the other day and it said we have 18 summers with our children. 
we say 18 to 20 years, it sounds different when you say years. But when you say 18 summers, it really hits in a different way. So make the most of the time that you have with them. Here they go. <laughs> See you next time.